So today on the heating bench I've got this Kenwood KRF V5560D which is a home theatre ramp. This is quite an old thing, I mean it's probably really outdated to be honest. I've had this thing for about 15 years or so. I picked this up from an online auction site which was like a surplus thing or something, I don't know, maybe returns or whatever, I don't know it be. When I got it all it had was a dent in the top casing, I'll show you here. Here's the top casing, it had a dent in it. So I took it off, strained it out and it's basically straight and that seemed to be the only thing that was wrong with it. It's been working kind of okay ever since. Now I actually had a problem, if it's been on for a long time and it gets quite hot, the audio will cut out and then will come back and cut out and come back. It will do that when it gets really hot, it's been on for you know a couple of hours or something like that. Or you've had a lot of volume coming out of it, whatever. But what I've started to get past a couple of times I've used it is on the centre channel it's quite distorted. So I'm thinking that there's something going on here, something's not right. It's getting old now, 15 years at least. I mean, that's how long I've had it. It's probably, you know, 20 years old or something. It's probably due for a bit of maintenance. It's, you know, it could be some bad solder joint, something like that. I mean, being the thermal thing with it cutting out, probably is a bad solder joint problem somewhere. And with the centre channel being distorted, that could also be a bad solder joint. The other channels will look fine. It's just the centre channel's distorted. I'm hoping it's something simple. It may not be. It may be beyond repair. I don't know, because it's got these special modules, the amplifier modules, it's got two of them in here. So it could be something to do with those modules going bad. I know it could be a potential problem. So let's have a look. That's what the inside looks like. It's also very, very dusty. I haven't cleaned this yet. I probably should do before I start working on it. So it's got some STK413-220 modules, both the same, left and right here. Looks like it's got some regulators. There's a 7812 over here, and there's something else over here. What's this one? 7912 so positive and negative regulators attached to the same heatsink I think I need to get this bottom PCB out and that's going to be a mission there's an awful lot of stuff I've got to take off to get that PCB out this is flexes and things like that I'm not too worried about those I can see it being a mission to get this thing apart but the only way for me to know for sure is to strip it down and have a look all the capacitors visually look okay I can't see any bulging ones they seem alright but you never quite know idea it could also be that it's just aged you know it could be leaking at the bottom Never know. Yeah, I need to put it up completely apart and have a good look at it. But 0216, 2002, that could actually be about right. Actually, yeah, that's possibly right. 20 years old. So you have these kinds of things. They always have lots of screws in the back, which I take off to get all the parts out. So let's get all these screws out. It's going to take a little while. And I'll come back once I strip the bits out. I start the top one here is basically a few screws which I've now taken out and some standoff little clips, little plastic clips. So I'll lift this top board out once I unplug things. I should probably take some photos just to make sure I actually don't mix things up and get it wrong. But I'll take all these screws out, strip the boards out, and then I'll come back once it's all out. Because you don't want to be watching me dismantle this thing, do you? Probably not anyway. Well, I've got it apart, well, as much as I can. Unfortunately there's lots of wires which are soldered directly between boards so I can't just unplug everything. So I've had to kind of mid it and just flip this board over. This can go out of the way. Don't need that there. So I can that. And I'm just going to inspect all around here. This is obviously the thermal area here because of the heatsink and the actual power transistors here. So these are the most likely area to have a problem. And I'll just go from here and I'll work my way across and there's capacitors on here which I may just do some checks on just to make sure they seem like they're okay. This one here isn't bedded down to the board properly. You probably can't see it, I'm just off screen. There's a cap just there, and that's actually wobbling a little bit, which means it could be failing and extruding off. It's possible. I'll have a look around and see if I can find anything, and I'll let you know if I do. Hopefully I do. And within 10 seconds of looking, I've got some bad solder joints over here. Already, right here, and there. The little rings around the joints. They look like they're failing. Another one there is looking a bit dodgy. Yeah, this this is going to need a, uh, a re-solder. Sometimes you get lighting on different ways. But yeah, it's definitely got some bad joints. I already found some, so... Yep, I shall probably have to sit down and re-solder this entire PCB if I'm, if I'm unlucky. But we'll see uh, how it goes. I'll just maybe re-solder what I find and go from there. But yeah, it's going to take a while. Oh, I just found something interesting. What the hell is that doing floating around inside this thing? That's very interesting. Well, I've been wanting to try and 
capture a bad solder joint on camera, you can just see this one here. You just see a little ring around it. That one is definitely broken, right? So I've been finding lots of little rings. I've been basically going through and just soldering everything I can see. And this one here has got a definite pronounced crack around it. You maybe just see it on camera there. I'm going to have to magnify it at the same time, so it's not the best. But uh, yeah, it's there. You know, slightly sharper maybe. But you can see a little ring there. So that's crack joint. And I'm finding lots of little crack joints which are either suspicious, they're probably okay, but still worth retouching. Most of them are like that type of thing where they look like they're probably still okay, but it's best to touch it up anyway. But I've been finding a few as well which look like this, which are actually probably cracked. So lots of those. I'm doing lots of touching up. I'm about halfway through the board so far. So I did find several cracks on solder joints on the actual power transistors, which isn't surprising, that's where I was expecting to see cracks. So I've resoldered both of those transistors, well ICs, and um, done every single pin. Because I did see quite a few which looked like they had cracks in, so completely resoldered both of those. That's likely what the main problem is, but I was going to go over the entire board, and I've only got like this top section over here to do now. I've checked the rest of it already. Well that's that ball completely checked and soldered over. I found dozens of joints which I wasn't happy with so done them all and I'm just going to drop it back in. I'm going to check the other boards out and see if I can see anything on these front panels and stuff like that and other boards that are flying around in case there's something else somewhere else. Um, also need to check the voltage regulators out which are back bolted to this heatsink just to make sure those are looking okay because they do have a PCB hanging off them so they could have cracked as well. Okay is that a crack there? Is that a scratch? Hold on. There's a little line on the PCB just here. That might be a crack, actually. So I'm trying to get it on camera here, but directly behind this pad here, there's two tracks coming down. There's a little line that comes straight across. Now, it could be nothing, but to me, as I've been giving it a scratch of my finger now and it's not been going away, that, to me, looks like a crack. Because it isn't getting any better. Usually, if you get a little, a little scratch, um, or a bit of solder mask or some other kind of dirt on there. You can give it a scratch finger and it goes away. This is not going away and I can see it goes right across. Yeah, basically from that hole straight across to the side. It's a little crack. I better fix that too. So I've been attacking it with my fiberglass pen just here, just rubbing up and down. And I can still see the line on the track itself. So I believe that is cracked. So I've now taken the solder mask off and I can still see the line in there. So yep, that is a slight crack in that trace. The one next to it seems okay though, it's the one closest to that to solder leg. So yeah, I'm going to re-solder that, I'm going to put some solder across it. Put you a bit of solder, it should be good enough. So something I just noticed over here, we've got some adhesive tacking down these cables. Now usually you wouldn't really worry about it, think, oh that's nothing. Just, you know, it's a bit of you know, silicon or something. Yeah, okay. Now I've actually seen on CB radios, really old ones, where this kind of glue they use to hold things down becomes conductive and becomes corrosive. So that's something I do tend to notice and just take a quick look at. Now, if we look at this one over here, set the probes in that, absolutely nothing, nothing happening there. Now you've got these ones over here which have got two wires running through it. So this is actually bridging two connections. And it's also darker. So if I put the probes in here, close together, now where it's still soft and pliable, it's still fine, it's, it's a good insulator. Where it's drying out, it's starting to conduct. There you go, 50 meg. This needs scraping off the wall before it becomes a problem. I'll be going around testing random capacitors and everything's looking really good. It's got a decent brand cap in it. It's got Matsuta branded caps in here. So actually a good brand. And all the ones I've been checking have been pretty good values. Right, point two two for example, or less. So I haven't found a single bad cap yet. I will check a few more and make sure that the they're all right, but then if they're okay, then I'll put the rest to get back together because there's loads of caps in this thing, and it hasn't actually had that many hours on it. It's probably only had probably less than 100 hours in the time I've owned it, right? In actual usage, it should be fine. I'd be surprised if it's you any problems with caps, really. I mean, obviously, you get old age because this thing I found a date code August 2002 was when this thing was made. This is 21 years old almost. So now I'm just looking at this processor board which is on top. I haven't checked the caps on this one yet. All the other caps I checked were all fine. So here we've got a big rectifier, and the legs on it actually looking slightly cracked. But I'm seeing some little, what looks like cracks around those legs. And also over here, 
that one just there which is a big power resistor. I'm also seeing a crack around that one as well. Also, I don't know if that's coming up on camera. So yeah, I think we've got a couple of things I need to touch up on this board as well. Now, the other thing this has got, as I was saying before about that gunk, this has got this gunk down here, which is being used as it's commonly used to hold down a component. Look how dark that is. That's really dark and crunchy. All right? That is hard. So there's a really good chance that this stuff is conductive and it's underneath this capacitor which means it could actually be corroding and shorting out that capacitor. It may not matter too much, but it may be fine. But I'm always suspicious of that brown gunk. Well, just tested the cap and it's measuring fine. 4,200 microfarad, 0.15 ohms. Like I said, they use high quality caps in this thing, which is really impressive. I might check the other ones. What brand are these ones, aren't I? Uh, actually, these are Nippon Chemicon, the small ones. And this one here, that's the Machito as well. So I'll check these other ones, these Nippon Chemical ones. And see how they come out. I've resold those joints already. I don't have a good look around the board. Anytime you've got these power transistors things like this, these kinds of devices, that's where you want to check these legs because vibration and the fact they're hanging off the board, that does tend to cause cracks on traces, like thermal expansion and stuff causes cracks. So it's worth checking those. So I'm just looking now at those power transistors that are on here. There's one of them, and you can see the little rings around the legs, and the right hand one's got almost like a definite crack. You can see it? See that big solid ring around it? About as close as I can get with this camera. Oh, yeah, fraction fact, better. So you can see that ring around the legs there. The right, the right one's definitely quite pronounced. So these are cracked as well. And the other one is just down here, which isn't looking as bad. I think there's still maybe something there. There's still a slight ring around. See the left leg there, it's got a bit of a ring around it. So I'm going to resolder those as well, just to be sure. So it's going to measure the conductive, <laughs> well, potentially conductive adhesive on here and see how it comes out. It's about a millimeter apart, I'm getting 22 mega ohm. Yeah, over here, 43. Over here, a bit more. Yeah, 26. Over there, 100 mega ohm, quite far apart. Get it closer. So it's almost touching. Mm, 70 there or so. So, yeah, definitely that stuff is going conductive. I might have to lift that capacitor off so I'm clean the board off and then maybe just put it back down again. I've tested the cap, it tests fine. I checked the other caps, they seem fine. So I'm just gonna get rid of this conductive gunk and put it back together. And looking at the board here, you can see where the gunk is, but you can see that shininess around that leg. That may be nothing. It could just be a bit of flux residue from the manufacturer, or it could be a sign that's been leaking. And this has been running down into inside the gunk here. That's possible. I mean, the cap tested fine though, so just slightly suspicious about the little ring there. That's like a, usually a sign of a leak problem. Well, it could just be some of the gunk that's been stuck to the board. It's possible it's just that, but yeah, just slightly suspicious about that. Well, I gave it rub some tissue and it's not going away, so it's not a liquid. It's probably just some of this gunk when I applied it, so I'm going to put that capacitor back in once I clean this off. You probably wonder why I'm being so fussy about this stuff. I mean, it's hundreds of mega ohms or, you know, 50 mega ohms, whatever. It's not going to matter, is it? Well, no. What I've seen that conductive gunk doing in the past is it gets corrosive. And I've actually seen it eat the whole leg off a component. It's just eating it away. The leg's gone. It's used on inductors quite often as well. Through-hole inductors and things like that. And you'll just eat right through the inductor. I've seen that more than once. That's why I'm worried about that. So I'm going to put this capacitor back on again, put some more iron gunk on there, and I'll put the capacitor back on and hold it down. Well, let's do a smoke test. Back together, I think I've plugged everything back in again. Let's turn the power on, see what happens. Nothing went bang. Alright, let's try turning it on. Okay, power's up. Brilliant. It's at least doing that. I'm going to set this back up in my system and see if it actually works. I'll assume it does. If it doesn't, I'll probably buy a new one. Because this is ancient. I mean, this is 20 years old. It would be nice to get a newer version. Supports modern technology a bit better. I mean, it works fine. It's a 5.1 system. But, uh, yeah. Well, it did work fine. It kind of worked fine. That's why I pulled it apart. Because it was almost working fine. Anyway, check the other videos out down below. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there. If you want to help me to buy a new home theatre system. Bye.